Alright, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. I hope nakapananghalian na kayo, tama ba? Nakapananghalian, okay? Welcome to our 1pm service. My name is Richard. I'm one of your pastors here. And uh, it's great to be back. Parang kahapon lang tayo nag-service ng Sunday. Sunday uli. And uh, you know, good news, no? Uh, I think three or four days ago, uh, binaba na yung alert level natin to three here at the NCR. And that means... Okay, we're already preparing f- to transition no? from uh, just doing online service to shifting back to on-site service as well. And I'm pretty sure some of you are already wondering, kailan kaya makakabalik at makakapag-face-to-face tayo and then we can worship together. Malapit na po yan. We are already coordinating with our LGU here at Pasig para mapagandaan natin yan. And very soon, We'll be making that big announcement, so tune in lang kayo. Uh, in the meantime, patuloy po tayo, sama-sama tayo mag-pray together, no? Every day, we post our 714 uh, prayer uh, points na we can really pray for our nation, we, we pray for one another, uh, we pray for the world, and uh, ang dami po nangyayari for the last 19 months of pandemic. But the great thing is, we're still here. We're in faith, not in fear, and I do hope that you're also in faith, okay? In fact, every week, we also meet uh, Thursdays uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, through our Zoom prayer meeting, and we hope you could take time to join us, no? Tuwing Thursday ng gabi yan, uh, at nakapost naman yan sa ating FB page. So feel free na sumama po kayo doon, and let's pray together, and let's believe God for the breakthroughs and really declare His glory in our nation and even for the rest of the world, okay? Uh, at the same time, uh, isa pang mahalagang uh, uh, announcement or at least reminder lang, next Sunday ang ating communion, no? So we're taking communion seriously because that's our covenant uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's remembering His finished work on the cross sa buhay nating mga Kristiyano. So, uh, as early as now, you could start thinking through and then preparing for your communion element, especially when you come together as a family uh, to attend our online service. Uh, you could start preparing those elements para sa next Sunday natin. Anyway, today is the second part of our six-week series on nearness. Yan po ang ating series ngayon. Ano? In fact, last week, we talked about uh, God uh, bringing comfort into our lives. And I really hope and pray, uh, anuman ang hinaharap ninyo araw-araw, you could feel the presence of God and the comfort that He brings into our lives. Okay? Ngayon, we'll talk about courage. Okay? Yung tapang, no? Alam nyo ba, two weeks ago, kakatapos lang ng filing ng uh, Certificate of Candidacy ng uh, mga kandidato, kakandidato for the national elections. And I think when you visit or when you check your social media handles or page or post uh, or, or I mean social media account every day uh, parang ano no parang national election na kaagad parang very soon no although alam naman natin sometime in May pa yan and uh, the political campaigns will only begin sometime in the first quarter of next year but every day as you visit the different news outlets marami ng balita ang tanong rehistrado na ba kayo Okay, uh, I really hope and pray that uh, you could register in extend po ng komilek yan. And that is our opportunity as Filipinos to be able uh, to cast our votes uh, in next year's election and hopefully sama-sama tayo. As we pray for our nation, mahalaga din tayo, we exercise our rights to vote bilang Pilipino. I think uh, a week ago, it's over 63 million registered voters already. So, kung hindi ka registrado and you're at the right age already, do uh, register anytime within this month and let's exercise uh, our rights no, as Filipinos. Siyempre, napakahalaga dito is we pray for our nation. pag natin as early as now, kahit mga seven or eight and a half months pa yung uh, election, matagal-tagal pa siya, Ibabad na natin sa prayer ang bansa natin. Ibabad natin sa prayer that uh, God's peace will prevail all over the Philippines. Alam naman natin, pag nag-election uh, time, usually merong violence, may vote buying and all that. But let's really pray that His righteousness will reign and rule in every barangay, in every city, in every province, in every region of our nation. Let's speak 
the blessing of God sa bansa natin. You know what? Every time we talk about politics, um, and uh, especially who to vote, to vote, ano, uh, minsan hindi natin maiwasang pumasok yung debate or at times argument between two people or maybe some groups of people. Uh, and oftentimes, when we talk about politics, it can bring divisiveness to many Filipinos. Okay? Lalo na, pag pumasok na yung political colors, no? <laughs> di ba? Yung uh, anong color ang preferred ni ganito o ni ganyan. And uh, whenever people come to us, to my wife and I, um, usually ang binabanggit na lang namin, uh, whether to our friends or to some people who would, who would talk about this, is uh, I think the best approach uh, for the coming election and probably who to vote is unang-una, we make our own research. Okay? Uh, marami naman tayong makikita na mga materials or probably background of uh, political leaders. And uh, of course, as you research, try to read from reputable media outlets. Okay? Sana wag lang tayong titingin sa mga nakikita natin from the Facebook. But let's take a look at the background as well para makita natin sino ba tong kandidatong uh, tatakbo sa susunod na election. Okay? At uh, ano ba yung uh, probably nagawa na niya previously sa previous uh, or sa current uh, office niya no? as a uh, public servant. At nang malaman natin, um, eto bang taong to, uh, makaka-contribute ba to sa growth natin in the Philippines morally, politically, economically, and hopefully spiritually? Okay, sa bansa natin as we continue to grow because uh, marami na pong nangyari for the last five and a half years. Again, um, syempre, ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat, as you research, you read, you pray. Okay? Para din wisdom ni Lord would be with us as we make that decision. In reality, human leaders are, uh, they have their own limitations. No? May mga kanya-kanyang limitasyon ng mga uh, political candidates, presidential, mayoral, Ano mang position yan. And I'm not trying to say, wag na lang tayong bumoto, but uh, reality is, if we solely put our faith or our trust on political leaders, most of the time, we end up disappointed, frustrated, or probably for some of us, we're already disillusioned. We voted for this candidate, and then nung naupo na siya, nag na. Okay? Parang, and that, that's the tendency when we put so much hope and our trust on a particular person instead of God. In fact, yan yung naging problema ng mga Israelites. When you look at the Bible, particularly in the book of Isaiah, ito yung pinag-uusapan natin sa series, uh, some 3,000 years ago, the Jews experienced this. Um, the Israelites, they were ruled, uh, particularly the Jews in, in, in the kingdom of Judah, they were ruled by 19 kings and a queen. And out of these leaders that ruled them, uh, over hundreds of years, only five of them were considered good or righteous, at least from the, the way the Bible describes them. And ang ibig sabihin kasi ng good rulers, national leaders who feared God, and they led the kingdom of Judah in obeying God's word. Yun yung basically parang standard, no? And the Jews placed so much of their trust, or the Judeans in particular, they placed their trust so much on these national leaders they forgot it was God who is supposed to be the ultimate king of their lives. Nakalimutan nila. Ngayon, ang tanong, sa panahon natin, ano, who do we trust when we're in trouble? When we feel like we are somehow hemmed in by the situations or circumstances of life, where do we draw our courage? Okay? San ba natin huhugutin yung lakas ng loob natin sa dami ng hinaharap natin araw-araw o hinaharap ng pamilya natin araw-araw? Ito yung gusto nating mga tanong na sagutin as we read the scripture. And I want you to open your Bibles at Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 7. And I'll be reading from the ESV translation. It says here, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, 
because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you, I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Let's all bow our heads and pray, Lord, as we uh, study God's Word today and continue our series on nearness. Holy Spirit, we are praying our hearts will be ripe prepared to receive this truth. And as we receive your truth in faith, we are praying that you uh, uh, bring the change that you want to, 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 to institute in our lives. And we pray that uh, even through the different circumstances of life, we would learn to walk with courage coming from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Alam mo, para mas maintindihan natin tong uh, chapter na to, no? Uh, the second half of the book of Isaiah, basically, parang ano to, parang binigyan ni God si Isaiah ng sneak peek of the future. He was basically looking at more than 100 years past his lifetime, no? kumbaga ahead of him. God gave him a picture of that and that is the vision or the message that he started sharing to uh, the Jews. No? You see, Isaiah saw Babylon destroying Jerusalem and taking the Jews as captive. And when you look at uh, uh, the history, makikita natin, in fact, nabanggit ko to last week, in 586 BC, the Babylonians indeed overtook the city. They destroyed um, tem the temple, the palace, and all the important places there. And then they took captive the, some of the youngest, strongest, and even intelligent uh, Jews. Dinala sila sa Babylon. Now, for the Jews who experience, who, who are used to experiencing God's divine protection, God's goodness, God's provision, para siyang far-fetched idea. No, kung marinig nila yung ganung prophecy, paano nangyari yun? Eh, pinoprotektahan kami ni Lord. We may be disobedient, but God continues to show His kindness, His love, His mercy to us. Yet, historically, all these happen uh, over a hundred years later after Isaiah prophesied this. And somehow, because of all these things that happened, it brought discouragement to them and uh, it really flattened their confidence and their, uh, uh, their faith. No? But then, God gave His assuring words to the Jews of restoration, of hope, and redemption na hindi pa game over. Sino sa inyo minsan pakiramdam mo game over ng buhay mo? Sa dami ng dinadaanan mo. We may go through that period of life, but hindi tutuldok ang nigad yan because meron pa siyang gagawin sa buhay natin the way He did it to the Jews. In fact, when they begin, when the Jews began putting their hope in God again, they will find the courage to move forward and face whatever challenges uh, they would have in the future. No? Now, interestingly, no, pag pinasa natin tong first seven verses, Isaiah repeated the phrase, fear not. Makikita natin yan in verses 1 and 5. And usually, when a word, a phrase, or probably a statement is repeated, ang ibig sabihin nun, may ine-emphasize ang Bible or may ine-emphasize si God. Okay? Now, fear is a common emotion for us human beings. Lalo na ngayon, ano, pag nagbabasa tayo ng dyaryo, nanonood tayo ng balita, nanonood tayo ng video, uh, in the different, uh, kung may video stream man na live, in Oftentimes, bad news can evoke fear in our hearts. And I must admit, no, um, during the first uh, ECQ last year, sometime in April and May, um, when I would go out w once every ten, uh, seven or ten days, somehow nakakaramdam ako ng kaba. Because, syempre, yun yung time na paakyat na yung uh, COVID cases in the NCR. And every time I would fall in line in, in the grocery here in, in Unimart, um, May, may ka ba, in a sense, paano kung madapuan ako ng virus? Diba, siyempre, first time sa ating lahat to eh. Paano kung madapuan ako ng virus? Hospital ako, may mangyari sa akin. What about my family? What about my kids? And I'm pretty sure, ganun din ang iniisip natin, ano? Or probably some of you, may family member ka, or maybe ikaw mismo, no? Na, na virus ka na, natamaan ka na ng COVID. And that's the usual fear that people have these days, no? 
And yet, uh, even though ganito yung pangyayari, when we look at uh, the realities of life, yes, fear is real, pero merong assuring words si Lord sa atin. Okay? At ito po yung gusto kong i-share sa ating lahat. Ano? Three assuring words from God that will give us the courage to face our own circumstances in an effort for God to prove that He is near. Okay? Kahit anong mangyari. Number one, we can walk with courage because of His promised redemption. We can walk with courage because of His promised redemption. No? Let's take a look at verse 1. Sabi dyan, but now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. You see, the Jews, um, they disobeyed, they uh, faltered, they worshipped idols, they committed um, immorality, and they basically turned their backs on the true and living God. Ito basically yung sinasabi ni Isaiah uh, for the future na mangyayari more than 100 years later, yet the Lord was reminding them He is not done with them. Judgment may come. Isaiah was probably saying, yes, judgment may come through the Babylonians, but God is saying, fear not. Why? He said, fear not. And then He said, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Judgment may come through the Babylonians, but then God intends to redeem them later on. Okay? He gave them that assuring word. Yes, the Babylonians would plunder the city, destroy the temple, destroy the palace, but He's going to redeem them because He called them by name and they are His. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng redeem? Alam natin, di ba? Tubos from uh, the Filipino term, no? But when you look at the original Hebrew language, ang ibig sabihin kasi nung redeem, it, it, it's ba- basically similar to the term kinsman redeemer na paulit-ulit siyang binabanggit sa book of Ruth. Okay? In the, in the, it's also in the Old Testament. It's just four chapters. Four chapters no? A kinsman redeemer means a male relative who according to Jewish customs, they help a weaker relative in need or in danger. No? Now, sa book of Ruth, um, siyempre, ang bida doon, si Ruth and then si Boaz na na-meet niya. Boaz was some kind of a hasendero. Parang ganun siya, no? May ari siya ng malaking lupa. And uh, he, 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 he was uh, also considered as uh, one of the nearest kins, okay? Or kamag-anak. Boaz became Ruth's kinsman redeemer and eventually they got married. Okay, na, nag-asawa sila, no? And uh, interestingly, when you look at the lineage, dito nang galing yung Dito nang galing sa angkan nila si David, the naging king of Israel. And 14 generations after David, or probably more, dumating yung line naman kay Jesus. Okay, in the New Testament. A very interesting story indeed. Now, the role of the kinsman redeemer is more than just, uh, kumbaga hindi lang to getting married. Okay, of course, yun yung isang picture uh, sa book of Ruth. But this person also avenges in the case or in the event a relative is murdered by a manslaughter, he delivers, he rescues, and in most cases, redeems property on behalf of the weaker relative. Now, when the Lord said in verse 1, I have redeemed you, ano may sabihin ito? The key idea here is that the Lord will avenge, He will deliver you, He will rescue you, the way He did it to the Jews. You see, the pandemic has brought a lot of misery to so many people, right? Uh, maybe as you're tuning into our service, you probably are still applying for a job. Maybe you're a businessman and your business is really struggling uh, big time. Kumbaga, hirap na hirap ka. Uh, probably you as a married person, you're going through marital issues. Uh, or maybe your son or your daughter is going through depression. Or probably baon ka sa utang. Okay? But... When you look at all these things that God is saying, in all that we're going through, ano bang promise ni Lord? Ano bang assuring word ni Lord? Fear not. Fear not. You can walk, we can walk with courage because of His promised redemption. You see, the Lord is your avenger when you need justice. When you read the news, um, some... Uh, FB pages or, or, or groups, private groups, are talking about so many things that they feel are uh, they were unjustly treated, but God 
is on your side. Fear not. His promise is to redeem you. His promise is to be with you. The Lord is our deliverer when we're in trouble. The Lord will rescue us in periods of difficulty that we go through. If you know you're a child of God, and if you know you have a personal relationship with Jesus, then we can be assured of His presence. We can be assured of His, uh, His strength and His grace upon our lives. The second assuring word of God is this. We can walk with courage because of His promised presence. He will redeem us and then this time His promised presence over our lives. Verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Now, sino sa inyo no, na subukan nyo nang sumama sa, sumali sa isang contest? Maybe it's a singing contest, maybe it's a declamation. Naalala ko, no, when I was in a third year high school, uh, ako, yung, uh, ako yung naging pambato nung, nung class namin sa Filipino speech contest. Grabe, no? Hindi ko ma-imagine na, <laughs> na naging contestant ako. So for several weeks, I prepared, I memorized my piece, I um, tried to perfect the gesture and all that. And uh, when I finally, when, in, when that big day came, the competition or the tournament came, uh, nakapila na ako no? sa baba ng stage, paakit kami. Kumakabog na yung puso ko. Kinakabahan na ako. And finally, when it was my turn and I was standing in front of a stage just like this, ang dami kong, ang dami kong nakitang tao. Nagulat ako. And uh, after maybe saying my first three or four lines, I froze right in front of them. I could not, para ako na, me, na mental block ako at hindi ko na matandaan ano yung susunod na sasabihin ko. At itong mas nakakahiya. Ay, hindi pa ako kristyano nun, ano? Sa so, sobrang frustrated ko at sobrang kaba ko, napa, napa ano ko, napa curse ako <laughs> while the mic was on. <laughs> Grabe. And I can't imagine, so para, parang gusto ko na lang mawala ng bula nung time na yon. And I just slowly turned my back <laughs> and went back to my seat. <laughs> Ganun yung nangyari. But fast forward, kasi parang feeling ko mag-isa lang ako nun. Fast forward, years later, I, got, I, I was already married and uh, God has already blessed us with three kids. This time, um, yung anak ko kasi, yung panganay namin si Bea, at, uh, when she was five, she, we, we enrolled her in a, uh, parang meron siyang personal na taekwondo trainer. No? And so pumupunta yung taekwondo uh, na coach uh, twice a week to train Bea. And uh, that was 2011. In 2014, uh, sumama, sumali siya, sinali namin siya sa isang competition. No? It's a national new face uh, competition in Ninoy Aquino Stadium. She was eight at that time. And uh, when, when it, it, it was almost her turn for her first, uh, kumbaga, yung first official fight. Okay, next official fight na. Hindi ko matandaan kung white belt, white belt siya sa picture na yan. Pero I think next level na siya nung time na yun. And when she was watching uh, her would-be opponent, I can see it from her eyes na kinakabahan siya. And I'm pretty sure tayo rin naman pag may mga ganung competition, kakabahan tayo minsan, no? Eh ako kinakabahan ako bilang dad, no? <laughs> Siyempre, first time niya, babae pa siya. Paano kung masipa siya sa, you know, mga, mga masiselan na part, di ba? Masaktan siya. And then, I knew she was trying to say something to me, but she, she doesn't know how because she was eight. And so, before a few minutes before her name was called, I came to her side, and then I knelt before her, and I said, Bea, look at me, sabi ko sa kanya. You know what? Uh, whatever happens to your first fight, and if ever you advance to the next, okay, whatever, that ha whatever happens, I want to tell you, Daddy and Mommy are proud of you. Okay? So, I just want you to give your best. Just give your best. Uh, just do what your coach tells you and everything will be fine. And daddy will just be there. Kasi may spot yung mga parents, no? Daddy will just be there. We will be cheering for you. So, laban na siya. Laban na siya, no? Sipa siya na sipa. Marami siyang nasipang hangin. <laughs> and after a few minutes, I think three rounds yata yun, uh, the scorecard went up. It was like 4-0. Grabe, 4-0. Zero. Zero, zero si Bea nun. 
Pero, alam mo yun, yung pagpunta niya sa amin, she was just happy. Kasi alam niya, nabigay naman niya best niya. Nakalab, nakalaban siya. Kumbaga, naka, nalagpasan niya yung fear niya. And I think the lesson there for her was that she just knew after the fight or during that fight, daddy was there watching her, fighting, cheering for her. And you know what? I believe that's the same message God is telling you today. What obstacle are you facing today? Ano ba yung hinaharap mo ngayon na feeling mo ba nag-iisa ka lang? You know what? Kung feeling mo nag-iisa ka, God is telling you today, I will be with you. Fear not. I will be with you. God will be with you when, if you feel like you are in a, you know, uh, probably a river, parang sinasabi rito, di ba? Through the rivers, when you pass through the waters, are you in deep waters? God's response is, I will be with you. When you're walking through the fire, He promised His presence to go with you. You shall not be burned or consumed. For when God is for us, who can be against us? Sabi nga ni Apostle Paul in the book of Romans. Again, when you look at verse 2, hindi naman niya sinabing if. Hindi niya sinabi itong uh, if you pass through the water, uh, waters. Sinabi ni Isaiah dito, when you pass through the waters. Because it's a given that there will be trials, there will be troubles, there will be ob- uh, obstacles along the way. But the assurance is, I will be with you. Yan ang assurance ni God sa bawat isa sa atin. Because His assuring word for us is we can walk with courage because of His promised presence. Finally, the third assuring word of God. We can walk with courage because of His promised love. Wow. Meron promise of redemption, may promised presence, and then He promises love to us. Take a look at verse 4. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you, I give men in return for you peoples in exchange for your life. When I was reading this text again and again, the question came to my mind, how can someone, okay, the Lord intends to judge still be considered precious in love? Can you imagine that? You know, one chapter before Isaiah 43, tignan natin tong verse 24 and 25. Itong sabi ni Isaiah the prophet. Who gave up Jacob to the looter and Israel to the plunderers? Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned, in whose ways they would not walk, whose law they would not obey? Ano mas sabi ni Isaiah dito? He was actually describing the attitude, the disobedient heart, the stubborn heart, of the Israelites. Verse 25, So he poured on him the heat of his anger and the might of battle. It set him on fire all around, but he did not understand. It burned him up, but he did not take it to heart. Maramdaman natin yung bangis nung, nung judgment ni God over the Israelites because they refused to obey God. They continued to walk in disobedience. And yet, paano nangyari yun? Ano ba ang gustong iparating ni Lord? Bakit dito sa Isaiah 43, nagbago yung direction in verse 4 when He said, You are precious and I love you. Paano nangyaring nag-change yung direction at yung heart ni God? You see, that's the same heart that God has for us. There may be times we, we appear wayward in our attitude toward Him. We would disobey from time to time. And yet, God continues to be with us. He promised His redemptive work in our lives. You know, over 700 years ago, after Isaiah's prophecy, the Apostle Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians and painted a graphic picture of man's helplessness and then contrasting it to God's abounding love and grace. Tingnan natin ang Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 3. It says, you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. That's basically the clear picture of who we were. Bago natin nakilala si Lord, 
we are basically sons of disobedience. We easily, we easily what? We easily uh, hurt people with words, with action. Kung gusto nating manakit sa social media, we could easily do that apart from Christ. Kaya nga sabi sa verse 3, among whom we all once live in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Kinamumuhi ang tayo ni Lord. Kaaway tayo ni Lord. Itong picture dito. But here's the thing in verse 4. Things change. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, galing netong conjunction na but, no? It changed the trajectory of our lives from sinners to being redeemed people of God. If you have a relationship with Jesus, then this is what is in store for us. He demonstrated the richness of His mercy into our lives and allowed us to experience His great love. Verse 5, even when we were dead in our trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. You see, because of God's great love, we have been redeemed. Our status changed. He changed our status from people who walked in disobedience and sin to a people redeemed through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Which is why no matter what situation you may go through today, gaano man kalabo ang hinaharap mo, what is God saying? What is His assuring word? We can walk with courage because of His promised love. As I close, and we're going to take time to worship God, who are you trusting today? Where are you drawing your courage? Is it on people? On the company you're working at? Is it on your business partner? Is it on the promise of someone to you? During this pandemic, may assurance siya sa'yo. I hope that at the end of the day, the assuring words that we would hold on to will not just be on people, will not just be on a maybe a nice-sounding political campaign or slogan, but it's on the Word of God, the timeless truth of God's Word. As we sum things up, three assurances from God, that will give us the courage. We can walk with courage because of His promised redemption. We can walk with courage because of His promised presence and love. Let's all bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for this series. This series is titled Nearness. Because in the second half of the book of Isaiah, you paint a picture of yourself as a God who is not distant, who is not detached in our situation or circumstance. Lord, thank you for the assurance that while people may promise things to us, and there may be times they may fail, they may have limitations, but God, you remain the same. You remain faithful. In fact, as we went through this verse earlier, your word is, I will be with you. Fear not. For some of us who are lacking the courage to face the circumstances of life, Lord, we ask for the Holy Spirit to move in our lives today. Lord, we repent. If there are times we would rather or we have placed our hope on people, we repent if we have placed our hope on circumstances. Today, we look back to you. Lord, our prayer as found in Psalm 34 is this, I sought the Lord and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. God, that's our prayer today. Just like the psalmist, we want to seek your face. We want to seek your face for we know the answer comes from you and you will deliver us 
from all our fears. Lord, your word says in Psalm 34 verse 5, those who look to you are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. Father, hindi kami mapapahiya as we look to you. As we walk in courage that comes from your word. Marami pong salamat. You know, as before we dive into the time of worship, I want to pray for some of you as well. If this is your first time to join our online service, or probably it's putol putol na Sunday, nakaka visit visit ka, but you've never made the decision to make Christ your Savior and your Lord. Today, God is making an invitation to you to connect with Him, to make Him your personal Lord and your Savior. And if you know you're that person, if you know God is touching you today, I want to invite you to bow your heads with me and pray with me. Follow me in this short prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of salvation. I admit that I am a sinner, that I have disobeyed you. But starting today, I make a decision to make Jesus my Savior and my Lord. Do come into my life beginning today. Transform me and change me. Make me the kind of person, the kind of husband, or the kind of uh, single person that you want me to be in Jesus' name. You know, if you pray that prayer, do us a favor. That's just the beginning of an exciting journey you will have with Christ. And in that comment section, can you type, I prayed? And uh, we would like to get in touch with you to help you in your brand new relationship with Jesus. Go ahead and type, I prayed. And then uh, one of our Victory Group leaders will be getting in touch with you so that we can help you grow in your relationship with God. At the meantime, let's take time to worship Him. Let us focus our eyes on Jesus. The Bible says He's the author and He's the perfecter of our faith. In Him, we have the assurance that He'll be with us. Wala tayong kailangan ikatakot. Thank you, Lord.
resting place is in your name forever say forever say in you Lord forever say Thank you, Lord. Can we give God praise for that word? I don't know with you, but I, I was really encouraged. Thank you, Pastor Richard. Um, I think that's a very timely word for us in, in, a, in a time where in fear can be seen anywhere <laughs> or everywhere. You know, if you're tuning in for quite some time or probably while, while listening to the preaching of God's word and you felt like merong mga fears sa buhay mo and one of them is the fear of the future. Eh? Um, nakikita mo yung balita, nakikita mo yung mga projection from different um, aspects of society, from business to education to the companies that you're part of. And you felt like, Lord, what does the, whole, what does, what does the future hold for us? And we don't know, honestly. No one knows what the future holds. But we know the one who holds it. That's why we can have courage to face tomorrow, to face, you know, to face the upcoming elections. Kasi yung, yung future natin is not in the hands of people. It's in the hands of God. That's why you're here. And you, know, you just know you have fear of the future. Specific yun. Fear of the future. Probably for yourself. Kung single ka, natatakot ka, Lord, mag-aasawa pa ba ako? <laughs> Kung estudyante ka, Lord, magkakatrabaho ba ako? Kung may pamilya ka na, Lord, makakapag-provide ba ako in the future? If you're that person, just wanna you know acknowledge who you are and help help pray for you. Can you type in our comment section the word future, so that uh, I know who I'm I'm praying for. If you're that person, you you have fear of the future, medyo ano ka, uh, anxious ka, you don't know what will happen, and it's uh, taking its toll on you. We wanna pray for you. If you're that person, you have fear of the future. Just comment there in the comment section the word future and let me just acknowledge you. Thank you, Angelica, Joey. We acknowledge that. And Desiree. Let's just pray. Father, the God of our future, Lord, we admit now we don't know what the future holds for us, but we know you, the one who holds the future. So Lord, we cast our cares upon you. Lord, kung whether we are a student, single professional, or we're married and married with kids, and we have responsibilities on our shoulders, and we don't know how we'll be able to face the future, God, remind us that we can have the courage to get up in the morning, to face tomorrow, because ultimately, you're the one who holds our future. You're the one who assures us. You're the one who is with us. So God, I pray that you would silence our fears. I pray, Lord, that our fear of the future won't cripple us to enjoy your grace today and to have hope today. Lord, I pray for those of you who are acknowledging their fear of the future. Remind them, God, that there's... um. To do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry for itself. Thank you, Lord. We trust in you. We rely on you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Angelo. Thank you, man. One of the beauty of being part of a church community is that we're coming together to stand for one another. And at this point, I want to pray for a specific group of people. If you're believing God for provision, whether you're in business or working or you just, you know, you're in need right now. Just type in their provision and we would love to pray for you. Maybe some of you got affected because of this pandemic, have lost job, or maybe your income got affected also. Just type in their provision. Maybe you're believing God for even 
a business deal to come and surely it will be a big provision for the whole family or even for yourself. Just type in their provision. I see that Joey. I see Joe. Desiree. See Rock. See Emily. May. I think there's two more. But if you're believing for provision, why don't you agree with me? Lord, you are the God who created heaven and earth. You own everything. Even the people belongs to you. And surely, we, your sons and your daughter, you will take care of us. You will provide for everything that we need and even some of our wants. I stand for my brothers and my sisters who are believing for provision right now, Lord. They may not understand where this provision would come or how it will come, but one thing for sure, we will fix our eyes on you, the one who can surely provide. You said in your word that you are the God who has given us the ability to produce wealth. And maraming salamat, Panginoon, that even right now, provision is on its way. Lord, I declare that for my brothers and my sisters, Lord, that they will never be in need, but they, have, they will have more than enough, that they will never borrow from anyone, but they will lend to many. They will be a blessing to many. Lord, maraming salamat because from this, uh, from this day on, Lord, we will look forward of how you will generously provide for your sons and your daughters. Lord, maraming salamat because we are expectant because you are the God who would lavish good gifts to your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Matt? Amen. Lord, we receive all the prayers, all the promises that you have given to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Palapakan naman natin si Lord for that. Thank you, Lord. I hope you were encouraged and you have greater courage as we face tomorrow. Before I pray for a prayer for a blessing for everyone, we want to remind all of us we're going to have our communion next week. So prepare your the communion elements, your bread and your juice, and we're going to do it together. We want our communion to be not just done out of tradition, but out of uh, out of our relationship with the Lord and be more meaningful. Kaya ngayon pa lang sinasabi na po natin na meron tayong communion next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you again for tuning in. Let me pray for all of us. Father, thank you, Lord, for today's word. God, thank you because we can have courage in this life because of your promised love, presence, and redemption. I pray, God, that we will always go back to that simple and powerful truth that our confidence is in you. Lord, bless the works of our hands, Lord. Bless the coming week. I pray that we will honor you in all our endeavors this week. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you all next Sunday. Invite your friends and your family. God bless you.